superstar panel. We're patriotic here, let me tell you. The author and broadcaster, Christine Hamilton. The journalist and broadcaster, Benjamin Butterworth. And the former MEP and political commentator. She was camping out with all of those folk on the mall, Belinda De Lucy. I mean, Christine Hamilton, where does the BBC and ITV get off? trying to rain on this spectacular parade. I, I don't know. Where does one begin? I mean, it was completely extraordinary. To describe it as the strangest show is unbelievable. It was one of the most magnificent mm. things I have ever seen. Rooted Anybody in tradition and history. Seen. Exactly. And will possibly never be surpassed. And the way King Charles brought all aspects of society and community into that service mm. was brilliant. And to make the remark about... They are a white family. Of course they were white on the... Terribly back. white, she well, says. Well, I mean, apologies for being right. White, that was, first of all, obviously racist, as you said, but it was also very crass and very stupid. What a mm. stupid, stupid thing to say. Mm. It would have made no difference, by the way, if Meghan had been up there, because we wouldn't have noticed. We didn't know she was black until she started accusing us all of racism. Most people hadn't even registered. Mm. I mean, this is a basically a white country. In 1953, I think it was 1% were non-white. Mm. 20 years ago, it was probably mm. about 95% white. Now it's 85% white, and mm. our monarchy is a white family. I mean, and by the way, just ridiculous. there was so much diversity, Belinda, all yeah. through the ceremony, but can you just imagine the outrage if someone was commenting on an African royal family or a or an Asian royal family and said, oh, they're terribly black or they're terribly Asian. It just wouldn't happen. So no. why should it happen when you're talking about our royal family? Because the mainstream media have normalised racism against white mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Not only normalised it, applauded it. So people who live in their echo chambers come on to stations like ITV or BBC Radio 4 and they don't think there's anything wrong in, in demonising people for being white, in associating whiteness with negative. So everyone else can be in the majority as long as you're not white because that's an evil thing. It is horrific and it's very BBC. BBC have done this before. They've had articles about uh, the countryside being racist. They, the presenter complained, well, not complained, but suggested that the Lioness team that won their victory against Norway, oh, they, Norway, they were, they were shocked wet. that they were yes, too, too all wet. white. They have a BBC early years guide that teaches parents to tell their children about white privilege. You know, th this is mainstream media preaching this racist stuff, allowing platforms to be taken up by racists and applauding it. I'm, uh, I'm not shocked mm. or surprised. They've fallen, no, no. fallen quite away since when they sang, played the national anthem every night at 12 o'clock. Um, but it is racist and now they're complicit in racism. People are absolutely terrified of being thought not to be woke. So they all go along with it. Mm. But wo wokery is anti-culture, uh, it, it is. is destroying our cultural well-being yep. and it's creating a culture of mm. anti-whiteness. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm which is racist. Butterworth, indeed, Benjamin Butterworth, surely ITV must apologise for this racism. I mean, the two presenters, Tom Bradby and Julie Etchenham, just sat there as this woman, this idiot, this racist, uh, described uh, that the royal family as being terribly white. Well, look, snowflakes are white, and I think I'm surrounded by them tonight. You all seem terribly easy of, easily offended by someone who is simply expressing their judgment, their view, their freedom of speech. Now, I think that actually... Do you think it was racist? No, I don't. Oh, I, come I, th on. I think it would have been just... better if the two hosts had, had followed that through. Both would it, would both just out of her... interest, just so that we can have the intellectual argument here, would it have I been... I can't guarantee would that. Would it have been racist if uh, a commentator had described an African royal family as being terrible? Black. Would you have said that was racist? Yes, but you I, would. I think the word terribly was being used as, a, as to describe the extent of how many white people rather than as a criticism. But it's but judging look, them on the colour of their skin. I think, That's it, racist. I think it would have been better if the host had followed it up so that she could explain herself because I doubt she meant quite how it sounds. Mm. But you know, I, I, I and think. And then the BBC I, bloke, Ali O'Connell, says no one's been offended by this. Well, hang on, I think you're all just being, you know, pretty pathetic. I'm not... I thought the coverage was, was excellent. These are two minor comments. You know, the only thing that really annoyed me was Claudia Wink on Radio 2 calling it Tory Christmas. I mean, I was livid. I love the, the royal family and the pomp and the ceremony and the pageantry of the monarchy, and I ain't a Tory, so <laughs> Claudia Winkleman, you were wrong on that. But, Christine, that, that, that exposes how the BBC think about an event that is patriotic. They automatically assume patriotism is connected to the to right. To the right, absolutely. And look at the way when um, the footballers and, and the right... When the right wing was hideous and they were... Um, 
the flag of St George. They were taking mm. the flag of St George as their own, and they mm. it did become associated with with sort of skinheads and well, Emily Thornbury still Emily hates Thornbury it. exactly, which is absolutely outrageous. People of patriotic politics has got nothing mm. to do with it, nothing whatever to do with it. I don't know why they had that Bridgerton actress on. I mean. Mm. Quite extraordinary. Well, I do. I I, I do, Belinda, because I've been researching this woman. And guess what? Mm. She's one of those folk who say if Meghan had been in the royal family, everything would have been wonderful. And... That's why they had her on. Well, it's because yeah. you know she chose because look, to you've leave got Tom Bradby family. sitting on that sofa. He's Harry and Meghan's best mate. Mm. So I noticed it all over the weekend the way that Harry and Meghan have got their allies, their henchmen out to yeah. do their dirty work in the British media. Oh, without question, the the pain that Harry and Meghan have caused the royal family and the excitement to hatred against the British people that they have enacted upon us mm. uh, is celebrated among these elites. But it mm. isn't just the BLM political poison. It isn't just the Harry and Meghan inciting hatred against us. It is the lefty mm. lovies racially self-flagellating um, mm. themselves yeah. because they hate Indeed. being white. Indeed. And by, and by the way, uh, it's also why quite a lot of artists didn't perform at uh, Windsor Castle last night. Yep, I'm looking at you, Harry Styles and Adele and Alton John, you know, the other Harry and Meghan crew. Mm -hmm. But didn't they miss out? They missed on out. Mm, they're lost, they're lost. But everyone came together their no matter loss. their colour. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Belinda Lucy, Benjamin Butterworth, Christine Hamilton, we're coming together tonight, my superstar panel.